Good evening, friends, and thank you, Pastor, for that word of prayer. We do appreciate very much your concern and your support for this ministry of teaching God's precious word. We've given up on overseas ministries now, but uh, once a year I do go to Canada for a conference to help train students in God's word. It's called the Word of Life Bible Institute, where I have lectured for 24 years in their main campus in Schoon Lake, New York. Anybody heard of Word of Life? Okay. And uh, thank the Lord in January in their Florida campus, and in May in their new Canadian campus. The idea being to train a whole new generation of young people in the whole counsel of God's precious word. And of course, my priority is to get among our, our Grace Brethren churches and our national conference annually and our College of Pastors mid-year meeting, as God may enable us, and uh, so your prayers will be very much appreciated. We have, friends, here a, uh, a little overview of the plan of God through the ages. I've called this the five worlds of history, science, and prophecy. Uh, we have an enlarged chart with more details on it by this name. It's part of a set of eight charts in paper, and in fact nine of them now in plastic coated edition that uh, stu students around the world are using. And of course that first world only lasted less than a month a perfect world in perfect harmony of uh, angels with each other and God and men with each other and God, that is a man and a woman, that's all there were in the human race, and a man and animals all in harmony. Can't imagine such a perfect world, really can't. The only problem of that first world was there was a potential in the human heart of Adam and Eve for rebellion, rebellion, disobedience. And that potential for you and me when we go to heaven is gone. There is no further possibility when you go to heaven to be tempted and to sin and to turn away from the Lord. Okay? That was the main problem of world number one. Okay? World number two lasted at least 1,656 years and it ended in a catastrophe. This was the curse and now we have what? The flood. And now we're in the third system uh, which is from the flood to the second coming. And the most important things that have happened in that third system are the call of Abraham and the Abrahamic covenant, the creation of Israel as a nation under Moses, and on the day of Pentecost, the creation of the church. Right. Now, the reason I call this world the same world, you see, since the flood until the second coming is because we're talking a lot about science things here in this chart. The relationship of God and angels and men and animals and topography, geography and climate have not changed since the flood. Okay? But when the second coming of Christ occurs, enormous changes take place in the relationship of God, angels, men, animals, topography, geography and climate. Radical changes, as we'll see. I mean, just as a sort of a foretaste of the enormity of the changes. All animals will be harmless again. All men will be redeemed. The climate will be perfect. There will be no more wars, crime, abortion, pornography. Evolutionism will be conspicuous in all the schools for its total absence. Creationism will be the first point in the agenda of every educational system. Can you imagine this? The government will be perfect. Who's in charge? God, through Christ his Son, who will be the King of kings and Lord of lords. Israel will be the number one nation. Israel will be. Now it's the bottom of the world of government, hated by everybody. It will be the top of the world. We'll talk more about that tonight. And so for a thousand years, God will give the whole universe a little glimpse of what a real world can be like under Jesus Christ with sin under total control. He'll rule the world with a rod of iron because every human who enters the millennium will have a potential for sin because they still have a sin nature. That's a difficult point. We'll touch on that later, God willing. But that is nothing compared to the changes that take place when the fifth system begins. What's that fifth system? You see it? The new heavens, the new earth, 
Why, listen, friends, uh, there'll be no more potential for sin. Uh, Satan and demons are gone forever. Everybody is glorified who's in heaven. And there won't be any more sun, moon, stars, animals. It'll be a vastly different system. And it's got to be very good because God says, I'm going to maintain that system how long? Forever and ever and ever. And no one's going to say, oh no, I thought it would be better. It is perfect. Forever and ever. Okay? Now everybody sort of has a desire in their heart to have a perfect kingdom in the world. But look at the sinful ways of doing this. The Tower of Babel was an effort to start a kingdom without God. That was satanic. In more recent times, communism. Anybody still remember communism? Under President Reagan, it ended in Russia. Isn't that incredible? He said, I'm, I'm going to fight this evil empire until it collapses. He stuck with it. He won. He'll never be forgotten. Okay? But Karl Marx says, we're going to have a communistic paradise. False. Totally wrong. Hitler, anybody remember him? He said, we're going to have the Third Reich. That means kingdom. And it's going to last how long? A thousand years. A thousand years ago, Reich. Was he wrong? Thank you. And I was a soldier there in 44 and 5 to help collapse that system, and some of you were too. Anybody else here that was in that war in Europe? One, two. Right. Where were you, sir? I was the southern part of England. Okay, and you, sir? Europe. What part? Uh, Germany, France. Okay, what division? What unit? The Air Force. Okay. Uh, Air Force. All right. Well, I was in the 84th Infantry Division, the Battle of the Bulge, and Norma says I'm still in it. <laughs> Well, Hitler's dream collapsed. But wait. Modern liberals say we're going to bring in the great society and make everybody love one another. See? Completely false. New Age movements. A sort of a mystical utopia. And then what? The end time one world mystery, Babylon, under the Antichrist. He thinks he's going to rule the world forever. In fact, Daniel says he will think to change times and laws. God says, you're going to have time, times, and half a time, and he's saying, no, I'm here forever. Wrong. And all of this, you see, Jesus said, this is your hour and the power of darkness, Luke 22, which, you know, led to his crucifixion. In other words, this is an amazing mystery. God gives Satan power to rule the world, see, Please don't for one moment think, dear friends, that Jesus is so sorry that Satan won Adam and Eve to his program and that he sort of like took over the dominion that God had assigned to Adam and Eve and Jesus is trying the best he can to get rid of him and can't. No. God has a plan for Satan. Did you know that? Look at this. At the beginning of the world... Satan and maybe 200 million angels that followed him were cast out of heaven. And they came down to win Adam, the king of the earth, and won him through his wife, Eve. And the dominion God gave to Adam was transferred to Satan, who still has it to this day. So when Jesus came and died on the cross, he crushed the serpent's head, potentially, judicially, legally, but postpone the actual implementation of that judgment until the second coming. And the second coming will be introduced by the collapse of Satan and his demons in terms of no further access to heaven, where they have been accusing the brethren night and day, just like in the book of Job, chapter 1, see, accusing Job, you remember. You take away that hedge from him and he'll curse you to your face, Satan said. God said, go ahead. Now watch what a true believer will do. Amazing book of Job. But all that ends when Michael and his angels cast out Satan and his angels down to the earth and Satan arrives knowing his time is short, three and a half years, to use the Antichrist.